Thank you for tuning in for the last two videos on how to brush your dog's head and ears and also how to brush their legs. Now we're going to show you how to brush the mats and how to tell when there is a mat on your dog. So again, remember to spritz your dog so you're not dry brushing them. And we already brushed her top knot here. You can see the difference here as opposed to here. It's very kinky and curly, clumped together. We're here, you can see individual strands. So as we get closer to her neck, she tends to get more matted as she's going through coat change. And her hair is about four inches long. She does have to be brushed every other day. When she doesn't get brushed every other day, sometimes every day, she does develop mats because her coat texture is changing from a puppy's to an adult's. So we're gonna show you a couple of mats in here. So here's one, and you can see this is all sticking together and it doesn't pull apart very well. And there's kind of like a mesh going on here. I know it's hard to see, being that she's white, but let's see if you can see with my hand underneath. You can see this, what looks like kind of webbing. That's what we call a mat. If we can't brush that out humanely without hurting the dog, then we will have to shave the dog down and get our clippers underneath, or our blade underneath that mat in order to keep the dog from getting tighter mats, which can hurt their skin. If a mat gets too tight, it basically kind of winds in on itself and it pulls the hair and it will kind of pull the hair like this and out until it starts to leave a bald spot on the dog or possibly create bruising. So when you have a dog that is matted and is not addressed, brushed, um, or shaved, shaved down, that can in turn hurt the dog. Another reason to maintain your dogs in between their grooming appointments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm working it a little by little. You can see where I pulled the fur away so I can see what I'm doing. And also to make sure that I'm only brushing a little bit of the mat at a time. So I only wanna brush a little bit. I don't want to tackle the whole entire mat with the brush as that's not going to get me anywhere. I'm just going to spend more time brushing the dog and it's going to hurt. I want to do a little bit of the mat at a time. And I want to keep working at it lightly so I'm not going to the base of the dog's fur or to their skin as I work on the mat. I want to make sure I don't give the dog brush burn in trying to get that mat out. And I have another one right here. You can almost see it together. A lot of times I will put my hand or my fingers underneath to make sure that I'm not going over the dog's skin. So it does depend on where the matting is on the dog. And again, I'm doing a couple strokes. And at this point, I'm gonna take a little more hair do a couple strokes, pull some more, and I'm gonna repeat the process once I get to the other side of the neck again, because that way I'm brushing a little bit of the mat at a time instead of going over and over and over again. And when you're watching this, a lot of you are probably thinking that she looks lost there. How does she know what she's combed, where she hasn't combed, where she has? How do you keep up with it all? This is like second nature for me, but when you're at home, it can be overwhelming. So a lot of times you can use hair clips. Separate your dog's hair, put a hair clip, a claw, put a little scrunchie around it. Take your comb and separate that other hair while you work on the hair here. And that way you can see what it is you're doing. If you don't have any hair claws at home or any scrunchies, stop by Walmart, Target, the dollar store, 
any of those will have what you need. We're gonna spray again. And we're gonna work little by little down her neck. making sure I don't spend too much time over the same spots to again ensure that I don't give her brush burn on her skin. Please remember it is very easy to brush burn a white dog, so you do have to be aware of that. And you can work on this little by little every day. If your dog doesn't like the process of brushing, Make it a bonding experience. Use treats, do it at a couple minutes at a time. So while you're sitting down and watching the news, put your dog on your lap, put them on your coffee table, put them on the floor, but make it a bonding time. Spend a few minutes if they don't like it, just brushing them where there are no mats and give them a treat. That way they know there's nothing bad about brushing and it creates a bonding time that they can look forward to between you and them. Again, don't forget to mist the coat so that you are not dry brushing. That will just create more coat breakage and static cling. And you want to try and brush in the direction of the hair. So whichever way the coat lays down in a poodle, it kind of grows straight out. So that's going to be a little different than a Maltese or a Shih Tzu, for example, or a Nasi. Now we've got a little mat right here, so I'm just going to take it in my hand and I'm going to Brush a little at a time, and you can hear it. You can actually hear the mat. And once that mat is gone, listen. It's very quiet when you brush. We've got another one here. What you can also do is use the corner of your brush to get that little mat. And just use the corner to brush instead of the whole entire brush. Just gonna use the corner and you're kind of tapping and pulling just lightly. Okay, so when you think you've got it all out, you're gonna run your comb back through until you feel no resistance. I hope this helps in maintaining your dog's coat in between its grooming appointments. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like our channel and subscribe so you can keep yourself notified when we have new content coming out. Thank you guys.